everyone on the committee anyway. <sighs> well, good morning, members. It's a pleasure to see you all on this beautiful Monday morning. I'd like to call this meeting to order. My name is Nathan Cooper. I'm the MLA for Oldsdidsbury Three Hills and the Speaker of the Legislative Assembly of Alberta. I would like to ask members joining us at the committee table to introduce themselves uh, for the record, and then I'll call on members joining the meeting remotely to introduce themselves. And if we can go all the way around the table, beginning with Ms. Rempel, if you can state your name and your position, that would be exceptional. Good morning, Jody Rempel, committee clerk. Nathan Newdorf, MLA for Lethbridge East. Jeremy Nixon, Calgary Klein. Leanne Bell, Chief of Staff to the Speaker. Good morning, Thomas Dang, MLA for Edmonton South. Good morning, Terry Cherkwich, Law Clerk. Good morning, Shannon Dean, Clerk. Come on, if we can go to the phones, uh, starting with Member Goring. Good morning, Emily Nicole Goring for Edmonton Castle Downs. Member Sabir. Can't hear you, Member Sabir. Do you want to just double check your mute there? Yeah. Good morning, Mr. Speaker, and all of you. Irfan Sabir, MLA Calgary McCall. Member Diol. Good morning, everyone. Jasbir Diol, MLA for Edmonton Meadows. Member Williams. Uh, Dan Williams, the MLA for Peace River. I apologize. I likely won't be turning on my camera as I just have poor you know, connection, but happy to be here. Member Sigurdsson. Good morning, everyone. RJ Sigurdsson, MLA for Highwood. Member Long. Good morning, Martin Long, MLA for West Gillette. And I believe that there may be an independent member who has also joined us on the call. Yes, there is, uh, Speaker Drew Barnes, MLA, Cypress Medicine Hat. Are there others? Excellent. Thank you very much. I would like to remind everyone of the current committee room protocols. Oh. Is now joining. Member Lowen, if you want to introduce yourself for the record, I would appreciate that. Todd Lowen, MLA Central Peace. I'd like to remind everyone of the current committee room protocols, which require those attending the committee meeting in person that they must wear a mask at all times unless they are speaking, and that all attendees maintain the appropriate distance between themselves and other meeting participants. Please note that microphones are operated by Hansard, so members do not need to turn the microphone on or off themselves. The committee proceedings are being live streamed on the internet and broadcast on Assembly, uh, Assembly TV. All video conferences are asked to ensure that their cameras are on when they're speaking, unless you have a connectivity problem and you're in Northern Alberta. Uh, please set your cell phones and other devices to silent for the duration of the meeting. With that, I move us to the approval of the agenda. Are there any proposed additions, revisions for today's meeting's agenda? If not, would a member move the agenda? Member Newdorf. So Honorable members, the member Newdorf has moved the adoption of the minutes. Is there any discussion? The agenda. Oh, sorry, the agenda, not the minutes. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor in the room? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. On the phones, in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. With that brings us to the approval of the meeting minutes. The motion, once it's moved, will be that the minutes of the June 14th meeting of 2021 of the Standing Committee on Member Services be approved. Is there anyone willing to make that motion? Member Newdorf, is there any discussion on the approval of the minutes? 
Seeing none, all those in favor of the approval of the minutes, please say aye. Aye. On the phones, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. On the phones, motion is carried. This brings us to item four on the agenda. Item four is the COVID-19 protocols. I'd like to start off this item of business by reiterating my recent remarks with respect to a vaccine policy for members. As I've noted publicly in the media, members of the Legislative Assembly of Alberta are masters of their own proceedings. Accordingly, it is the Assembly alone that may, through the passage of motion or an amendment to the standing orders, implement a vaccine policy in connection with members and the Chamber. Of course, committees may make recommendations to the Chamber, but it is the Chamber alone that can enforce the implementation of those rules. In addition, in terms of vaccine policy for employees, in memos that I sent out on October 8th, 2021, and additional information on October 15th to WIPs and all members of the Assembly, I clarified announcements made by the Premier and the Public Service Commissioner that indicated that the Legislative Assembly of Alberta employees includes caucus and constituency staff, are members of the public service accordingly. The policy on vaccine requirements for employees that applies to public service employees also applies to members of the Legislative Assembly office unless this committee, Member Services Committee, orders an exemption very or a variation to this policy. With that said, members of uh, employees of the Legislative Assembly Office of Alberta are required to meet the same standard of rapid test or uh, vaccination uh, for employment here, with the exception, again, it, unless Member Service Committee creates an exemption for this policy. With that as background, I understand there may be some discussion on this matter. Member Dang. Thank you. Oh, uh, sorry, Member Dang, to interrupt. Uh, please uh, indicate your desire to speak to uh, this issue uh, by letting uh, the clerk know, or if you're in the room here, a show of hands, and I'll happy to include you on the list. Member Dang. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I, I certainly appreciate the comments um, that you've provided both uh, today and, and, and previously uh, in, in the media. I, I think that certainly we know members are, are the masters of their own domain in, in, in terms of and with respect to the legislature. And I think it's important that when we look at um, the public health situation and the evolving public health situation across the province, that we have a consistent policy that is followed um, and, and uh, demonstrated by, by leaders in this province. And, and, and we know that um, this committee has done that work in the past. I know that uh, government members, um, I think at the very first meeting of this committee, um, stated quite, uh, quite clearly that, that they wanted to lead by example, and that's why they were making changes to things like MLA salaries and, uh, and so on. And, and I think that uh, members of the government should, should agree that we, we need to continue to lead by example, uh, particularly so in, in, in such significant situations as, as this uh, public health emergency. So, so with that, um, I, I do have some more comments, but I, I'd like to make a motion um, that was submitted under Standing Order 52 um, first, uh, so that can be on the screen while I speak. Is that Thank you, Member Dang. If you give the committee clerk just a moment here to get this motion um, available um, for members of the committee, uh, I believe this motion was posted to the committee website uh, late last week on Thursday. Um, and uh, was available for you there and is now available on the screen for all other members. Member Dang. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Do you want me to read that in or? I think for the purposes of the record, that would be beneficial. Sure. I would move that the Special Standing Committee on Member Services recommend that the government introduce a motion in the Assembly on the first sitting day of the fall 2021 sitting that states the following. Despite any standing order or practice of the Assembly, and for the duration of the 30th legislature until the Assembly passes a motion rescinding this motion, 
A, an individual, including a member, may not physically access the legislature building or any other area in which the proceedings of the assembly, including its committees, are being conducted unless the individual provides proof of one of the following to a legislative assembly office employee designated by the speaker for this purpose. One, full vaccination against COVID-19 by means of the quick response code made available to the individual by the government of Alberta. Two, an exemption from vaccination based on a protected ground under the Alberta Human Rights Act. Three, in the case of an individual who is 11 years old or younger, the age of that individual is as provided by a parent or guardian. And B, the Office of the Speaker is responsible for administering the conditions on access to the Assembly and its committees as prescribed in Clause A. And C, this motion comes into force on passage. So, Mr. Speaker, I, I think this is a pretty clear motion. Um, we've seen across this province uh, businesses implementing vaccine passport programs. We've seen businesses across this province uh, now being able to check QR codes, I mean, that was significantly delayed. Um, I think it was a significant gaffe by the government to, to release QR codes without being scannable, but we're beyond that now. Um, businesses, even before that, manually checking identification against vaccination records um, for the vaccine passport purpose, uh, and, and ensuring that if you want to go into a, a, a restaurant and get a, a slice of pizza, that people had to be fully vaccinated or, or partially vaccinated uh, until a certain point and, uh, and have that record verified by, by, the, by the place of business. And, uh, and Mr. Speaker, I think it's very clear that if, if these are the measures that the government wants to um, have in place across the province, um, and, and these are measures that we believe are effective against COVID-19, and that every single MLA in this place believes vaccination is an effective means to get past this pandemic, to get on the other side of this of this emergency, um, and and to be able to reopen Alberta for real, not just for summer, but for real, Mr. Speaker, because this government promised that they would open Alberta for summer, and and they did that. Uh, but now in the fall, we're back into restrictions, and, and we're back into vaccine passports um, that that they had to be dragged kicking and screaming to. Uh, but Mr. Speaker, here's an opportunity for the government to actually lead by example. Here's an opportunity for every elected member of this place to show that we believe vaccinations are safe. Um, and, and I know the government uh, House leader has said, oh, all of our caucus members um, have been or will be vaccinated except for, except for one for a medical reason. Uh, but Mr. Speaker, uh, I don't think that's sufficient. Um, I don't think it's sufficient because every single other Albertan, if you walk into a movie theater right now, if you walk into a restaurant right now, they're going to ask you for proof that you're vaccinated. They're going to ask you to show that record. Um, instead, this government has asked us to take them at their word. Uh, we've seen other Conservative Premiers do the same thing and have to walk back those comments. Scott Moe, just a couple weeks ago, Mr. Speaker, uh, the Premier in Saskatchewan had to actually kick a member of his caucus out because uh, of, of um, a fake proof of vaccination. So, so we don't think it's sufficient that government members tell us to take, uh, take them at their word. Albertans haven't taken them at their word for months, uh, particularly during this pandemic. And I think it's very clear that we need to have a real measure in place that allows us to keep this building open. Right now, our galleries are closed. We can't have members of the public. We can't have, uh, we can't have media in these rooms. We can't have them in the chamber when we come back in just a few weeks here, Mr. Speaker. And I think that's a shame. We need to have real policies in place that are going to protect members, protect staff, protect the public, and show the public that we're serious when we're talking about dealing with this pandemic. We're serious that vaccinations work, and we're serious that we believe in the science and we trust in the process to ensure that we can get out the other side of this pandemic. So, so hopefully, um, I, I look forward to hearing comments from, from some of my colleagues here, but, but hopefully we'll all be able to agree that this is a necessary step, and this is something that will allow us to, uh, to, to show the province uh, that we believe in vaccinations. Thank you, Member Dang. Uh, for the purposes of the committee and for the record, I believe that uh, Member Ellis has joined the committee meeting. If that in if indeed is the fact, uh, could you introduce yourself, please, Member Ellis? Yeah. Uh, Mike Ellis, I am the uh, member for Calgary West. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Member Ellis. Uh, is there others wishing to speak? Member Nixon. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, I guess I'd like to uh, comment a little bit about uh, this motion and the, some of the comments that were just made. First of all, for, for clarity, uh, in order to access uh, restaurants uh, and other support or, or services in the community, uh, we did give the option of both double vaccination and uh, or uh, proof of a negative COVID test, uh, which is what the House Leader, uh, Government House Leader, has announced to the media in regards to access to the Chamber for MLAs. So, in regards to um, 
my, my concern about this motion is it does create a bit of a double standard in that regard. My, my larger concern is uh, that this committee uh, and its role uh, should not be about recommending anything to the legislature that is going to restrict private members' access to the chamber. Um, people, uh, members are duly elected uh, by their constituents to be in that chamber, be able to represent those constituents and, and vote. And uh, for us to be putting forward a motion that would potentially restrict members uh, from accessing the chamber because of the personal health uh, decisions uh, is, is quite concerning. Uh, I am a part of a caucus uh, that has uh, made an agreement in regards to uh, implementing a, a, a policy amongst uh, our members uh, to be vaccinated or provide uh, proof of a negative test. I support that uh, announcement by our House Leader in regards to moving forward that way. Uh, but I do want to make it clear I find it very concerning that we uh, at this committee would be proposing anything that would be restricting a member's access from the legislature and uh, bringing up a, a point of privilege and uh, frankly speaking blocking that member from even being able to access the chamber to make that point of privilege so uh, for all of those reasons i will be voting no uh, to this and i encourage all of my colleagues to do as well are there others member dang Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, and, and I think that's frankly ridiculous. I think it's frankly ridiculous that we're sitting in this place and members of this legislature, members of the UCP caucus, don't believe in the effectiveness of vaccinations. We saw in the fall, uh, in the spring session and, and, and last year as well that, that we were able to have virtual means of participation in the legislature. We were able to have virtual voting. We've seen other legislatures, uh, not just in Canada, but across the world, implement virtual debate mechanisms as well. We can have real measures in place if, if people are unwilling to prove their vaccination status or unwilling to get vaccinated. And, and, and frankly, we don't know which one of those it is, Mr. Speaker, because UCP members will not prove to, to the public that they actually have been vaccinated. Uh, Mr. Speaker, beyond that, the point of privilege argument uh, is, is frankly ludicrous. Uh, we've canvassed this extensively. Um, you yourself have said, and, and you can correct me, Mr. Speaker, but members are the masters of their own domain. Members are able to make those rules in, this, uh, in the legislature, um, and, and we can make that recommendation here at committee. And if that rule was in place, it would be no different than any other other standing order that limits access to the chamber. Mr. Speaker, if, if you or I weren't wearing a tie, we would be thrown out of the legislature. Those are, those are the rules we put in place for ourselves here. Um, and to suggest that uh, we can't do something that keeps others and ourselves safe, uh, to demonstrate to the public that vaccinations are safe, to show that we are willing to stand with the same rules as everybody else, um, to show that we are willing to have an effective means um, to get past this pandemic with everybody else, simply because this member thinks that, uh, that, that UCP members think that, oh, well, we need to not limit people's access uh, with one additional rule on top of all the other ones that we ourselves have made up for this place, Mr. Speaker, is, is, is say, frankly ridiculous. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. Technical, uh, technical options exist um, and can be implemented uh, in time, and, and, and we would be happy to accept an amendment that would allow us to, to take some time to implement uh, technical technical. Uh, tools in, in terms of allowing members to participate. Uh, and the member saw this motion uh, as we submitted it in advance under Standing Order 52. And if the member actually believed that was a legitimate reason to vote against this, I would hope that the member would have submitted an amendment. We didn't see an amendment submitted. So instead, Mr. Speaker, what we're doing here today is we're seeing UCP members push back against the science of vaccines. We're seeing UCP members push back against uh, public health policy that will actually make a difference. And we're seeing UCP members refuse to stand and lead by example for the rest of the province, refuse to use the same rules they're putting in place for everybody else. And, and, and indeed, Mr. Speaker, I think it shows that these UCP members that are going to vote against this are not serious about the vaccine passport program. Thank you. Member Diol, followed by Member Newdorf. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I just wanted to thank you, uh, Member Dang, for bringing in the, this motion today and speaking so eloquently and effectively to this motion. And I was a little surprised and discouraged by uh, listening to Member Nixon's comments on this. So what this motion is basically saying is that this is enforcing what the government, the Premier and the GCP government have been Drew saying Barnes. is now joining to to Wardens for uh, the past some time. And uh, if we don't want it to move forward and support this motion, then I don't know what does mean of the government's announcements around a million dollar lotteries, $100 benefits, 
uh, to encourage the vaccination uptakes if the members of this assembly, representatives of Albertans, don't want to hold to the same standards. They wanted to uh, be excluded from those same health orders that we are asking public uh, uh, Albertans, the, the families, the businesses, and each and everyone in this province to follow to contain the virus so we can go back to the normal life, so we can focus on economy again. So uh, this is simple. Uh, once again, uh, it's a sorry to say and sorry to see that uh, by uh, opposing this motion, the government is obviously once again demonstrating the mixed messaging that has actually, uh, you know, quite damaging to our province in the past. And it's seen that the government members and the government uh, has not learned any lesson. I think it's very legitimate, reasonable ask in this motion to do the same, but we are asking the public in Alberta to do. So I think we need to support this motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member Newdorf, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, a number of things are, are concerning as the arguments from the opposition come forward is that they want consistency with what we've asked all Albertans to do, which is actually not this motion. What we're proposing is that we follow the recommendation of the Public Service Commissioner, which is either to be double vaccinated or show a, a test within 72 hours of a negative COVID uh, infection. And further to that, it is beyond uh, the mandate of this committee to, to uh, dictate to the Assembly how they should act. As you said, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, that it is the Assembly alone that can uh, govern the, the actions of those within the Chamber. So uh, it is our actions that show leadership and leading by example, which again, the opposition has already acknowledged and, and so has our government house leader that at the beginning of session, it is very, very likely other than one member going through medical, um, uh, some personal medical challenges that w w the government caucus is expected to be fully vaccinated. So we do want consistency of regulation. We do want a consistency of message to the, the people of, of Alberta, which has been consistent for some time that they can be double vaccinated and show that proof of vaccination or have a negative COVID test within 72 hours. Anything beyond that is, uh, is much different than compelling, compelling or encouraging or requesting Albertans to be vaccinated, but that is their decision to make. And that is the freedom uh, of a free and democratic society that we now have, that people get to choose. We don't always choose uh, what what we would like them to choose. Uh, the opposition, more than anybody, should understand that as they were not chosen to govern the province at this time, Albertans chose the United Conservative Party instead. So we, uh, we basically are allowing that, that freedom of choice and, uh, and we are providing that consistent recommendation in alignment uh, with the Public Service Commissioner. And I would uh, urge all my colleagues to vote against this motion. I have Member Sabir. Thank, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. A bit surprised to hear uh, government opposition uh, to this motion and their uh, assertion that it somehow restricts access of members. As you have mentioned, and it's pretty clear that members can come up with their own procedures and regulate uh, proceedings, access, everything. One example, one simple example uh, that my colleague Emily Dang mentioned is that we put dress codes and without uh, being properly dressed, we are not able to access the legislature. That's one simple thing. So. Requiring vaccine passports is not restricting anybody's access. It's just regulating access to the legislature. And we are doing that in the context of a global pandemic that uh, costs Alberta almost 3,000 lives. Still, there are 15,000 
uh, Albertans who are uh, recovering from that virus and it still poses a threat uh, to our society. And as leaders, as elected representatives, we need to send a strong message that if we are asking Albertans to get vaccinated, if we are offering them incentives to get vaccinated, and on many occasions, even Premier has said that the pandemic now we are seeing is of those of unvaccinated people. The burden we are seeing on our hospitals is those is that of unvaccinated Albertans. So if we want to send a clear message, if we are asking public service to uh, be double vaccinated, I think that's a pretty simple, straightforward motion that will send a very clear message that that's what elected representatives are doing. That's what we expect from Albertans. And I don't think uh, it has any to anything to do with the member access to legislature. It's just regulating the process, how we want to access the legislature and how safely we can do that. I think it's a very common sense motion and all members, I urge all members to support this motion. Are there others? I have member Dang again. Just want to make sure that member Dang. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And just to re reply briefly to Mr. Newdorf's comments, I think that they are frankly outrageous. When, when we look at the very policies being put in place in this province, we actually know, thanks to a newsletter by Member Allard, um, that Dr. Hinshaw's recommendation to the UCP caucus, to the UCP government, was not to have a testing option. So when Mr. Newdorf comes in this place and says that this is based on the recommendations that we have these multiple options uh, in terms of vaccination passport requirements, um, that's simply not true, Mr. Speaker. We, we know that the UCP members and UCP caucus undermine the public health system, they undermine the recommendations, and they specifically weakened the rules that were going to be recommended by, the, uh, by, by Dr. Hinshaw. So, Mr. Speaker, I think it's outrageous that the member would come in this place and, and, and make those claims. I think it's also outrageous that we have in this place uh, members who, who simply do not understand that Albertans don't believe them when they, when they say they're leading by example. Uh, we see other Conservative governments having to kick out members of their caucus for lying about their vaccination status. So when these government members come up to us and say, uh, take us at our word, we're vaccinated, our government house leader has said that, that's not good enough for Albertans. That shouldn't be good enough um, if, if we're going to be leading by example. If we're going to be leading by example, we need to be doing the same thing as every single other Albertan. These members need to show their QR codes, they need to show the proof, they need to tell Albertans that they are vaccinated, they believe in vaccinations, and the vaccines are safe. It, it, it simply does not make any sense that we, we, we see members time and time again continue to undermine these public health rules, uh, continue to undermine the requirements. Uh, and Mr. Speaker. Point of order has been called. Member Newdorf. Sorry, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, under Standing Order 23, H, I, and J uh, making allegations against other members, uh, uh, Emily Dang, on numerous occasions on this uh, time speaking, has alleg allegated that uh, members of the UCP caucus have undermined the public health orders. That is uh, a clearly a, an overreach and uh, an extreme statement, uh, which he has no proof. Uh, the, the NDP caucus has deliberately taken messages and twisted it to their convenience. It is beyond, uh, beyond the pale that they would continue to do so, especially when those members are not here to defend themselves, and I believe he should withdraw and retract. Member Dang. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I, I think clearly this is a matter of debate. I, I, I did not refer to individual members uh, undermining public health orders, uh, though I did refer to individual statements by members. Um, I did not refer to those statements as, the, as being the action of undermining. And Mr. Speaker, you yourself have ruled on this many times, but I want to read for you um, a, a quote uh, from, from uh, Member Allard's newsletter, and I, I think that will, uh, I think, color some of these, which is, uh, I quote, I want you to know that the that is the reason that there is a negative test option as an alternative. This was not the recommended option when this policy was first presented to caucus. As much as I value freedom and choice, I cannot ignore the hospitalization rate and reality before us. Um, so, so, Mr. Speaker, uh, and that's the end of the quote, but Mr. Speaker, very clearly, uh, we see these documents and statements coming out in public, uh, and we see members of the UCP caucus continuing to make these statements and continuing to put out these newsletters that state these things that I believe undermine public health orders. Uh, but, Mr. Speaker, certainly the debate around um, the level and degree of that, uh, um, and, and whether members, but not, mem not an individual member, are doing that uh, is debate and, and not a uh, matter of a point of order. Thank you. Are there others? Sorry, if you've had an opportunity to 
provide your argument. We don't typically go back and forth in point of order. Um, I'm prepared to rule. I would suggest uh, that member Dang um, stick to the content of the motion as opposed to providing significant um, color commentary. Well, I would agree this is a matter of debate. Uh, the language um, is unlikely to be helpful, particularly in a committee setting. I understand that they're sometimes very different, the House and the committee, and so I encourage him to stick to the matter at, at hand. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, and I'll, I'll try to wrap up my comments here, and, and I, I'll, I'll ensure I try not to cause disorder in this place. Um, but, but, Mr. Speaker, certainly when we look at this motion, when we look at the clauses laid under this motion, this motion closely resembles the actual measures that should have been in place uh, across the province. It closely resembles the actual members measures that were recommended to the UCP caucus. And indeed, Mr. Speaker, it brings in alternatives such as exemptions for uh, based on protected ground under the AHRA, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, that would ensure that members who have the who have a significant reason not to be vaccinated um, are able to prove that and are able to, to show that. Uh, but instead, Mr. Speaker, we have members um, refusing to bring in the, the, the simplest requirements to ensure vaccination in this place. We, we, we have members refusing to bring in um, the lowest bar that if you want to go and have a, a slice of pizza um, in, inside of a restaurant and sit down and have that slice of pizza, Mr. Speaker, you have to show your vaccination status. Um, this is what we are asking every single Alberta to do right now. If, if Albertans are going in um, to restaurants and getting breakfast as we speak, they are expected to show their proof of vaccination, Mr. Speaker. And, and instead of doing the same thing, um, these, this government continues to want to have a separate set of rules for themselves than the rest of Albertans. They continue to have a double standard for themselves versus Albertans, Mr. Speaker. And, and I think it, it, it cannot be more clear uh, that this government um, is not serious about, these, uh, about the vaccine passport than they are refusing to put it on themselves, refusing to prove the same requirements as themselves, and refusing to have the same um, same requirements as, uh, as every single other Alberta. And Mr. Speaker, um, the, the idea that, that we are trying to impose this on the Assembly in this committee, the idea that we are trying to somehow breach the privileges of members in this committee, the idea that, that the government members keep on bringing up on saying there is some procedural reason we shouldn't be bringing forward this motion, I think it's frankly ridiculous. We, we see that this motion itself is a recommendation to the legislature so that in the legislature, which all members will be able to attend on the first day of that sitting and make these points on the floor of the chamber, um, all members will be able to make these points as we debate this proposed motion, if the government actually accepted this. Um, all these points that they are, they are making up around the rights and privileges and immunities of members, Mr. Speaker, which, which I encourage them to perhaps touch up on, on, on the House of Commons and perhaps they should touch up on their, their, um, their procedure here, Mr. Speaker, because none of these changes we're putting in would, would significantly infringe any more than any other standing order or practice and procedure we have in this place. So this is a simple requirement that we're expecting every single burden to follow, yet government MLAs do not need to be held to the same standard. Thank you. Are there others? Hearing and seeing none, I'm prepared to call the question. On the motion as proposed by Member Dang, all those in favour, please say aye. Any opposed, please say no. No. On the phones, please say aye. 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 Opposed aye. on the phone, please say no. 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 Opposed. No. Member Dang has requested a recorded vote. We will do so uh, here in the room and then go to the phone. I will call each member by name. Please indicate only for or against. Uh, in the room, in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, please say no. No. On the phones, member Sabir. In favor. Member Goring. In favor. Member Diol. In favor. Member Ellis. No. Member Sigurdsson. Opposed. Member Williams. Opposed. Member Long. Opposed. That motion is defeated. 
Honorable members, we are at item number five, other business. Is there any other business for the meeting today? Member Newdorf. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We would like to move a motion, if that uh, is possible. Uh, I believe that there was an additional motion provided for um, in the internal committee website, provided that that is the motion that you intend on moving. Uh, that wouldn't require approval of, of the committee, the majority of the committee. Is that what you intend to move? Yes, I believe it is. The Honourable Member Newdorf. So again, following practice, I will read it into the record just to ensure that it is there. Uh, Newdorf, to move the Member Service Committee support the Legislative Assembly Office's administration of the Public Service Commission's policy direction that all Legislative Assembly employees provide proof of vaccination or a negative Sorry. COVID. No, I think that's that is the point. previous motion, I believe, that you're reading. It's, it's not on notes. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. It is requiring the consent of the committee then. Sorry, I don't believe it was provided. Okay. So why don't you... Read it slowly, or do we have to do proof? We're going to get consent. Consent. Uh, if you're hoping to move a motion that was not provided, then... Um, Member Dang. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, perhaps I could suggest perhaps a uh, member could distribute it digitally and we could review it as well. Uh, and perhaps take a f f three or five minute recess to review before we give consent. Uh, well, you can't give consent based yeah. upon the content of the motion. Yeah, yeah. You either give consent or to move a motion or you don't. Um, let, us, uh, let us go directly to the question. There, there can be some debate on uh, whether or not consent is granted. That is uh, debatable. Is there anyone wishing to provide comments about that or shall we move to uh, the question on whether or not a motion should be moved? To the question, all those in favor of allowing a uh, motion not on notice to be provided to the committee, please say aye. Any opposed, please say no. No. On the phone. Um, no. I, sorry, just a sec. I'll call by name if that's fine with everyone, as my, my guess is this uh, will end there anyway. Um, Member Ellis. Yes. Member Sigurdsson. Yes. Member Williams. Yes. Member Long. Yes. Member Deal. No. Member Sabir. No. Member Goring. No. Okay, that motion is carried. Point of order. Point of order has been called. Member Dang. Uh, Mr. Speaker, this is a motion for unanimous, or this is a request for unanimous consent. It's not a motion, um, so it should. You're wrong. It's by majority of the committee. Member Newdorf. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, if I'm able to read it slowly read for the record. Oh. Uh, uh, if, uh, if yourself or perhaps a member of your team has an electronic copy, uh, if that could be forwarded to the clerk, the clerk will get that uh, on the screen as quickly as possible um, so that she's not actually typing your content, but uh, go ahead and read it. And to members of the committee, we will have it circulated via email as soon as possible. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, in order to move that Member Services Committee support the Legislative Assembly Office's administration of the Public Service Commission's policy direction that all Legislative Assembly employees provide proof of vaccination or a negative COVID-19 polymerase chain reaction test or a negative rapid COVID-19 test on an ongoing basis to protect the health and safety of all of its employees, the healthcare system, and Albertans. Members, the um, motion is available on the screen. I will just get some confirmation that we're having it sent to uh, members of the committee momentarily. Is there debate? Member Newdorf, why don't you start the debate? 
Mr. Speaker, I do believe it's, it's fairly self-explanatory and it uh, follows the debate from earlier, but basically that we just believe this is necessary to support the steps and, and protection of all Albertans while providing several options for them to do so in a free and uh, democratic way. And with that, I look forward to the rest of the debate on this motion. Are there others? Member Dane. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I think it's pretty disappointing that the government members were unable to submit this at the prescribed time and, and instead were forced to use their majority to, to ram through this motion. Um, my understanding, Mr. Speaker, is that, uh, and perhaps with your guidance or the clerk's guidance, is that these policies are already in place without a, a modification to the uh, regulations, exemptions and variances order. Um, perhaps I can ask for some guidance there first and then I'll continue. Thank you, Member Dang. Certainly, as I mentioned in my uh, preamble to uh, the, the agenda item, um, my, mo my memos of the 18th and the 15th have communicated similar content uh, to the motion, but the, uh, the chamber, of course, is the only one who can deliver on that. Uh, as I indicated in my remarks, uh, but as I also indicated in my remarks, of course the committee can pass a motion uh, that it sees fit. And so uh, I believe that that's what the debate is here as to whether or not the committee wants to pass a motion um, as presented by M Member Newdorf. It's certainly in order. And so I am happy to have the debate on the issue. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, for that guidance. I think that certainly, um, again, as I said, it's disappointing the government members were unable to submit this ahead of time so that it could be properly reviewed. I think that certainly it, it, it is insufficient in, in, in terms of it, it doesn't actually uh, get rid of the, the negative test option and, and it doesn't address MLAs. It doesn't address the members who, who uh, are supposed to be the ones leading by example, who, who are the elected officials in this, in this place, who are the ones who are elected by, by thousands, in some cases tens of thousands of their constituents, um, to represent them and, and, and to make good decisions on behalf of all Albertans. And, and we see time and time again that this government um, wasn't even able to do the, the work properly and get this motion submitted on time, but now that they aren't even including members in it. So, so, Mr. Speaker, why is there this double standard for UCP MLAs, for government MLAs? Why is there this double standard for, for, for MLAs to not uh, have to meet the same requirements as now they're asking their own staff to? Mr. Speaker, if my constituency assistant or any other staff person who is even uh, in this place um, needs to have these requirements, needs to have these rules in place, why don't I? Why doesn't the member sitting opposite me have to have these requirements in place? And, and Mr. Speaker, again, we know that the, um, the Public Health Agency of Alberta did not recommend the, the negative uh, PCR test. That, the, that, the, that in fact, uh, based on Member Allard's newsletter, um, based on her own words, the UCP caucus overruled the public health um, officials in Alberta and brought in changes that, um, that allowed for a degradation in the, in, in the status of, of, of our, of our uh, vaccine passport program. So Mr. Speaker, I think it is absolutely hypocritical and hypocrisy at, at its worst that this government would be, uh, would be unable to bring the, forward, the motion proper, forward in the proper manner and then on top of that would continue to exempt themselves and continue to put forward this double standard where, where they do not believe they should live by the same rules as even the people who work in the same offices as them, Mr. Speaker. That even people who are sitting um, sitting across from at a board table, Mr. Speaker, would not need to have the same rules as them. This is hypocrisy at its worst. It, it shows that this government is completely out of touch with Albertans and shows that UCP members do not understand the seriousness of this crisis, the seriousness of the pandemic, and do not understand um, that vaccines and showing vaccines are safe and effective is essential, and that UCP members um, are not serious about ending this pandemic and keeping Alberta open for good. Thank you. Have Member Goring, if there are others, please. I see Member Sabir as well. Member Goring. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I just am so 
confused as to why this government continues to put forward recommendations that go against what the the public health is recommending. We know that public health is recommending getting vaccinated, showing proof of the vaccination, full stop. Why the UCP continues to put forward amendments um, from their caucus that go against what the public uh, health recommendations are is just beyond me. I, it, it seems to be more of a political statement than an actual safety measure. We know that 85% of Albertans support the vaccine passport. We know that Albertans look to leadership about direction of how to uh, comply with the recommendations. And when we have the UCP again continuing to create rules for themselves, do things that they believe will, will help themselves is just mind boggling. It, it sends a message that this pandemic isn't serious. Those that have been impacted um, in devastating ways don't matter. Um, I'm just, I'm so concerned that here we are again talking about um, an exemption for what seems to be a, a political reason as opposed to what uh, public health is recommending. So I would encourage all members to vote no be a strong leader in what um, the public health is recommending and have us double vaccinated, get rid of the, the testing portion. It's been clear that being double vaccinated, providing proof of that is essential and what works. And we need to model that of, to, to Albertans as leaders in this province. Um, I I completely disagree with this motion um, and I would encourage all members to vote against it. Members on the speakers list I have um, Sabir Diol Nixon Williams I will alternate caucuses uh, member Nixon followed by member Sabir followed by member Williams followed by member Diol. Thank you Mr. Speaker I just wanted to address some of the comments about uh, leadership and double standards that just because it cons consistently keeps coming up and uh, first of all, I want to emphasize the, the leadership side of things. And I think we've all heard from the government house leader in regards to the stance uh, that our caucus has taken and uh, the leadership that's demonstrated uh, by that. I mean, on, in addition to that, the numerous pictures of my colleagues uh, on their Facebook posts uh, getting vaccines, uh, even one of uh, my colleagues uh, who created a big billboard, uh, the Emily for Calgary Edgemont, Prasad Panda, uh, has billboards all over his constituency of that. And uh, so I think there's some significant evidence of, of a leadership in that regard, in it, and it's being demonstrated through our caucus. And uh, granted, it's being demonstrated through the NDP caucus as well. Um, and uh, so good, good on that. Uh, in regards to the double standard, um, I have to follow the same uh, procedures that my constituents, when I will go to a restaurant, I need to demonstrate proof of vaccine uh, or a negative test as my constituents do. And uh, I support that in regards to uh, reducing transmission and moving forward. I, I wanted to emphasize that we uh, need to make sure that we're protecting the, the privilege of members who don't necessarily agree with us. And that's a, at the end of the day, that's what this is about. This isn't about creating double standard for UCP MLAs, but this is about making sure that we're not restricting access the, 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 for members who don't necessarily agree with us in that regard, and that, that they have every right to walk into that chamber and be able to represent their constituents and vote on their behalf. So this specific motion is about um, aligning um, the, the recommendations from the public uh, uh, CMO and, uh, and, and our policy. So anyway, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member Sabir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, think clearly, vaccine passport is not a controversial issue for our caucus. Our leader has said that, and I will repeat that all 24 of us in NDP caucus, we are all vaccinated. It's controversial somehow for the UCP caucus, and even at a time when we know that our hospitals are filled with uh, individual Albertans who are not vaccinated, when even Premier says that the pandemic, the wave we are seeing is, the, is that of unvaccinated Albertans, we also see double standards. And I will quote from, again, member Allard's letter, she says, and I quote, I know that vaccine passport, for example, are 
incredibly controversial for Albertans who have not been vaccinated. I want you to uh, I want you to know that this is the reason there is a negative test. A point of order has been called Member Newdorf. Mr. Speaker, you've already spoken to this. We, uh, under 23 H, I, and J, again, making allegations against a member, if they're going to just cherry pick and pick select readings of, of the newsletter, should they not submit the entire newsletter for the full context of everything? But again, uh, Member Allard and that newsletter isn't being debated here. It's this motion. And I would ask that uh, the member refrain from those kind of allegations and get back to the task at hand. Member Dang. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, I think certainly you have provided guidance uh, during this meeting that that was not a point of order. And, and indeed, Mr. Speaker, I would be happy to table um, that newsletter when we come to the appropriate time and we're back into the chamber um, at the first available opportunity, Mr. Speaker. And um, as that is a document we have been referring to. Uh, but Mr. Speaker, I think that uh, in, in terms of the context uh, with regards to this motion, it is important that we have the ability to, to speak to um, the Public Service Commission's direction, the policy regarding that, which are included in the text of this motion, right? And, and, and how we arrived at this motion and, and, the, and the requirements that we're, we're looking to be putting in place as a policy for this, for this assembly. Thank you. I agree, this is a matter of debate. The Honourable Member for Calgary McCall. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I was just reading the last line which states this was not recommended option when this policy was first presented to the caucus. And also for record, uh, I can uh, email a copy of this letter uh, to the clerk. So we have some reference and the whole context uh, of this letter. So basically what member Newdorf is asking us here is to put in place a policy that is not recommended by public health of Alberta. And I think having negative tests, there can be uh, many reasons that one can be positive, they still may get tests within those 72 hours or within uh, the time frame after the test, they could get virus. It's not the safest policy, and that's maybe in part the reason it is not recommended by public health. I think the question I have for UCP member, why they think that we should trust them or Albertans should trust them on an issue where public health officials of Alberta are saying that that's not the recommended option. That's the question we should be answering. The why, as member, we should be voting for a policy that is not based on science, that is not based on evidence, that is not based on the advice of public health officials of Alberta. Member Williams. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. It's becoming evident to me that the NDP caucus opposes government policy and the public health. Um, recommendations and that they're using this committee as an attempt to try and make political points rather than truly uh, its purpose, which is its responsibility over um, LAO uh, and over uh, the member service uh, committee responsibilities, member service orders, communication orders, administrative orders. Uh, and for that reason, I think it's it's very important we focus on what's at hand here. This motion that Member Newdorf is putting forward is consistent with the public health orders, is consistent with Dr. Hinshaw is saying, and the public health experts at the Chief Medical Office. Um, this is something that is reasonable to do. It is beyond incoherent to me why the NDP would put forward the previous motion but vote against this one. Um, unless their purpose is not public health and public safety, unless their purpose is simply to pick politics uh, and oppose a government position, fair enough, I suppose they very well can oppose that. And if they want to, they're welcome to fight in the next election and do so. As for me and a caucus and this committee, let's focus to doing our responsibility and our duty at hand, which is voting on this motion on its merits, which are good. And for that reason, I ask the NDP caucus to please get off its political high horse and vote for the motion reasonably. 
Um, thank you, Member Williams. Uh, sorry, I meant to mention uh, prior to the previous speaker um, to Member Sabir, while I appreciate you uh, sending the letter to the committee clerk, there is no real um, tabling mechanism. Um, so thank you for emailing her. However, it uh, won't create a permanent record. Um, Member Deal. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'm actually once again surprised and appalled by the statements and the um, comments made by the member, uh, Member Williams. It, it's it's not the NDP. It's not the NDP caucus member. It's, it seems like it's UCP caucus members. Uh, it is so sorry to see that. Doesn't seem to be agree with the public health orders. That's exactly what we are actually demonstrating. But we are looking what UCP uh, member New Dorf, um has been trying to push through this committee is, uh, you know, contradicting the public health orders. So this is not the message. The premier and the, uh, the chief medical officers uh, announce when they go uh, to make public announcements. And, and you are doing this, uh, bringing this um, uh, proposal while we have still 15,000 active cases in the province and Albertans are struggling. Hospital and healthcare is under strength. Strength it is almost to the, to the brink of crashing our public healthcare in Alberta. We have been requesting the help from uh, from the different provinces, and uh, and this is not in line with, totally not in line with uh, the public health order uh, orders made by the chief medical officer, uh, Dean, Dr. Dina Hensha. So it, it's hard to understand why the GCP members are so adamant to modify and amend these orders to just appease their uh, dissent views in their own caucus. And I would say it is actually damaging and it's costing to Albertans. It's costing our business. It's costing our, our economy. So what basically we are saying here is the same thing the premier and the chief medical officer announced uh, in, in public. So why we are trying to create a different set of rules for MLS when we as elected representatives have actually a responsibility to hold to higher ethical behavior. In this case, we are trying to abdicate uh, from our responsibility. And I once again uh, encourage uh, all members to oppose this motion. This will send a very long message uh, and it will cost Albertans, Albertans health, Albertans life and their well-being. Thank you once again. Are there others? May See, I speak, Chair? Uh, Member, Member Williams. Williams. Yeah, I was happy to let it go to a vote, uh, except for that last comment, um, just to me seems outrageous. Um, am I being gaslighted? This is the government policy and the public health recommendation for discretionary activities and for many places of work, such as in the public sector. We are mirroring the Public Service Commission's policy. That is what's going on. It is not in contradiction. It is quite literally a mirror of the government's position. I mean, to me, this is <laughs> this is not some reckless activity that's going to cost lives. The NDP caucus wants to have mandatory vaccinations for everyone. That is their position. It seems clear to me. That is not the government's position. There is a negative test option. This has been the position for quite some time now. I'll ask the members to please remember to check their emails that come in to look at the news to understand that this is the position. I mean, it, it, they can say it all they like at this committee. That doesn't change the fact that this, this, is, this is the same, the exact same position that has been imposed on the public health, uh, by the public health um, officer and discretionary activities that has been imposed uh, by the public service commissioner's policy. Um, so we, we will leave it there, and I hope we can go to a vote. Uh, but um, I, I just need to make it absolutely clear that this is effectively an exact mirror 
of the government policy and the recommendations of public health orders. Thank you. Dang. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I'm just going to be quite briefly, and then I think um, we can move on here. But certainly, Mr. Speaker, I think that it is it is ludicrous to suggest that this is a mirroring of the public health orders because, frankly, MLAs continue to be exempt. I think that Mr. Williams does not see the the problem in that, um, and, and speaks uh, speaks miles in terms of what is the intent of the government caucus here, and that is to create a double standard. It appears uh, for themselves uh, compared to the people who both work for them and other Albertans across this province. Now, Mr. Speaker, on top of that, um, we know that, 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 frankly, these were not the public health recommendations that were brought forward by the Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Henshaw, uh, and we know that because government members have said that in the public, in the news, in the media. So, Mr. Speaker, perhaps the, the member that just spoke should, should check his own emails, should, should read the, his own news articles, um, because certainly we know that, that in those meetings that UCP members were in, they were able to successfully reduce the measures um, that, were, that were recommended by, CMOH, uh, by the CMOH, uh, and we know that because UCP members have said that publicly. So, Mr. Speaker, I think that we look at this motion, we know that it's insufficient, we know that it continues to create um, a double standard where government members uh, live by a different set of rules than every single other Albertan, and, and we know that that's uh, extraordinarily disappointing, and, and, and Albertans are watching. Thank you. Honourable Members, are there others? Seeing and hearing none, I am prepared to call the question. On the motion, as proposed by Member Newdorf, all those in favour, please say aye. Any opposed, please say no. no. I will go to the phones uh, by member name. Member Ellis. Yes. Member Williams. Yes. Member Sigurdsson. Yes. Member Long. In favor. Member Deal. No. Member Goring. No. Member Sabir. No. Motion is carried and so ordered. I um, will uh, for uh, Member Dang has asked for a recorded vote. Well, it was not asked for in advance, and I didn't indicate that it was recorded. Uh, for the purposes of this, we have recorded those on the phones, so um, we can proceed with Member Newdorf, Member Dang. No. We will. That motion uh, is defeated with a recorded vote. Oh, sorry. M motion is carried with a recorded vote five four, and uh, the records will indicate as such. Uh, we are at other business. Is there any other business that would like to be discussed today? Uh, Mr. Speaker, if I may. Member Williams. Uh, uh, well, Chair, I'd like to bring forward a motion to add the Deputy Government House Leader remuneration to the member servants, member uh, allowance orders, uh, and to close the loophole to prevent double dipping. Uh, would you like me to read the motion? I believe it has been provided in advance to the committee for the section of other business. Yes, well, uh, the motion itself wasn't uh, part of the agenda. This motion was submitted to the committee uh, prior and was available on the internal committee website. If you can, Member Newdorf, or correction, Member Williams, read that into the record just as soon as we have it on the screen. You let me know when that is. I will okay. do. I will do so. Please proceed, Member Williams. Thank you. Uh, I move that the Member Service Committee amend Section Three of the Member Allowance Orders as follows: A, in subsection two, I. Striking uh, one, sorry, striking out uh, there shall be and substituting subject to uh, subsections three to five, there shall be, and two, by adding the following immediately after clause C, C1, uh, 12,096 a year in the case of the deputy government house leader, B, by adding the following immediately after subsection two, three, 
if more than one member uh, if more than one member holds the position of deputy government house leader only one of those members is entitled to the additional allowance prescribed for that position under subsection 2 4 a member who holds the position referred to in subsection 2 is not entitled to be paid the additional allowance prescribed for that position if the member receives a salary in accordance with subsection 1 of the executive council salaries order 5 a member who concurrently holds more than one position referred to in subsection 2 is entitled to only one of the additional allowances prescribed for those positions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Do you have any additional comments? Yeah, the rationale is quite straightforward. I believe all the members have seen this. Um, and members carrying out the duty of the deputy government house leader, they should reasonably be entitled uh, and fairly compensated for the work, um, something that was not previously in the orders. Um, it's uh, different from work of a minister um, if the individual does not hold that position. If the minister um, holds a position of deputy government house leader, they can only claim one of the two. Um, so we, we're really removing the ability for, for individuals to claim two um, different remunerations in a section. Um, so, for example, I think in many ways for this current situation we're cost neutral our current um, government whip is not claiming that government whip uh, salary uh, because that same individual is also um, an associate minister claiming that in section one um, I think that uh, we've paired this um, parallel to the same as the government whips uh, salary in terms of the dollar amount uh, and it is a reasonable amount of work that's done these individuals um, working in executive council or in leadership positions in the caucus um, do do a lot of work, especially on the government side when it comes to the government house theater with uh, aggressive agendas of legislation. Uh, so it's important that we compensate them for the work that they that they do. Um, so with that, um, I'll turn it over to uh, you, Chair. Thank you. Are there others? Member Dang? Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and wow, um, just wow. Uh, if, if you're talking about out of touch with Albertans, if you're talking about a situation where we are currently in the middle of a global pandemic, we're currently in the middle of an Alberta health crisis, uh, where just last week, over two days, 68 people were reported dead uh, in this province. Mr. Speaker, to, to come in here and actually uh, suggest that uh, UCP MLA should receive a, basically a 10% raise, um, $12,000 raise uh, in the middle of this pandemic to pat themselves on the back, uh, Mr. Speaker, and pat the, the UCP MLA's back and say, great job, here, here, here's a raise in the middle of a pandemic uh, when, when we should be focused on fighting the, the COVID-19 crisis, when we should be focused on ensuring that Albertans are safe and Albertans are vaccinated and Albertans are at home. Mr. Speaker, w instead, UCP members, and, and Mr. Williams' motion here seems to be uh, focused on rewarding his friends. Mr. Speaker, that's simply the height of hypocrisy. To, to go after healthcare workers, to lay off thousands of educational assistants, to lay off um, healthcare workers to go after wages on provincial service workers, to go after wages on healthcare workers, to, to go after wages on nurses, to attack doctors, all throughout a public health emergency. And then a 10% raise for the, for the UCP MLA, a 10% raise for the deputy government house leader, Mr. Speaker. That is simply outrageous. Healthcare workers do a lot of work too. In fact, many of them are working overtime. They're working in ICUs that they haven't, um, when they haven't received training for that in, in over a decade in some cases, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we know healthcare workers are at the brink right now and, and they're overworked. And instead of offering them raises, instead of working with, instead of working with the healthcare heroes, what we're seeing is the UCP going after them and saying they need to take wage rollbacks, they need to be laid off, they need to be less compensated for their work, but UCP MLAs, well, they should get a 10% raise, they should get a $12,000 raise. Mr. Speaker, it, it, it simply doesn't make any sense. In the middle of a pandemic, they denied $30, $30 raises to ACE recipients, and yet the, the, the UCP deputy house leader will get a $12,000 thousand dollar raise so when we're talking about how much work people do when we're talking about um, the level of hypocrisy in this province when we're talking about who deserves to be rewarded and who deserves to have our support right now i think it should be the hard 
working frontline workers in this province. I think it should be the people fighting this pandemic every single day. I think it should be Albertans who are trying to uh, make the best of what they've got and not UCP MLAs getting $12,000 raises. Right now, Mr. Speaker, it doesn't make any sense that we would make this, uh, this hypocritical change when this government and this government member who is in the government caucus continues to attack healthcare workers, continues to attack and request wage rollbacks. Uh, I, I might just interject here, Member Dang. Um, I, I could have misheard you, but it sounded to me like you said that this member continues to attack health care workers. My guess is that um, that isn't the case. That is unparliamentary, and I ask that you apologize and withdraw. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I withdraw. I clearly meant to say uh, this member's caucus continues to, and this government caucus continues to attack health care workers. So, Mr. Speaker, when we look at these um, changes that are being brought in place, when we look at the direction this government is bringing to the province, when we look at the direction the government is bringing to the fiscal situation in this province, Mr. Speaker, this is supposed to be a fiscally conservative government. This is supposed to be a fiscal government that is trying to get our spending in line. And instead, uh, what they're doing is on the back of health care workers, on the back of public servants, this government continues to attack um, the people who are keeping this province running during a pandemic and then rewards their own insiders, rewards their own friends, and gives a $12,000 raise, a massive raise, Mr. Speaker, to their own MLAs instead of to those people who are on the front lines of this pandemic. If there is anything uh, more hypocritical, I haven't seen it yet, Mr. Speaker. We were supposed to be here talking about vaccine mandates and ensuring the public servants uh, that work in this place and in our offices were safe today. We were supposed to be talking about making sure MLAs would be vaccinated and safe. And instead, what we're talking about now is giving 12,000 additional dollars to a UCP MLA. What we're talking about is giving $12,000, a 10% raise, something unheard of, basically, um, uh, outside of this building, Mr. Speaker, to UCP MLAs because they think they need to pat themselves on the back uh, in the middle of this fourth wave when just last week, in two days, over 60 people were reported dead in this province. So, Mr. Speaker, I think it's simply ludicrous, and I, 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 I'm happy to hear additional comments. I have Member Williams. If there are others, please indicate uh, to the clerk. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, the, the truth is, is that this position is a, a new position in that normally it's held by, in the past, it's been held by a government minister. So the compensation for that work was taken care of already in subsection one. The fact that we now have um, a different or, or situation uh, and to be fair, it's also cost neutral within our government um, is uh, is reasonable to compensate the individual for the work that uh, he'll be doing. So this is not a raise. Someone's not getting more money because we thought that they've done good work. Someone is getting compensated for the work that they're doing. Um, it is true of all the members of the legislature and executive council. They ought to be compensated fairly for the work they do. I will remember remind um Everyone that uh, our entire legislature took a 5% uh, reduction in salary um, almost immediately upon taking office, and a 10% reduction for the premier. Um, this this wage reflects that 5% reduction um, in terms of uh, paralleling with the government whip. Um, and so I think it's important that we understand that this isn't about grandstanding politics. This is about compensating folks for the work that they are doing. Uh, and he will uh, obviously want to um, be able to uh, continue doing that work in the legislature. Uh, and uh, on that light, I'll turn it over to you, Mr. Speaker. All right, honorable members, I have um, independent member Lowen, then I uh, also have member Diol and member Goring. I think we will go to member Lowen, followed by member Diol. Okay, thank you, Mr. Speaker, appreciate that. Uh, I've been trying to think of words to describe this, and I, so far I'm at tone deaf, out of touch, unimaginable, absurd, hypocritical. Uh, here we have a government in the middle of a health crisis, and the, the Premier's uh, first thoughts, obviously, is uh, trying to figure out how he can uh, line the pockets of his own people to the tune of $12,000 a year. We have Albertans suffering, losing their jobs, losing their businesses, losing their homes, 
in, in all this uh, chaos that's going on right now. And this government, the, the, the best thing they can come up with in a, in a meeting like this, a committee meeting like this, is to give one of their members a, a, an enormous raise that, that was, has never been done in the past. This position has never paid this in the past. This is the $12,000 raise. This is just taking care of your own people. And uh, I, I think it's, I, I actually think it's disgusting. I can't believe that this government would do this. And, uh, and I think everybody should vote no. Obviously, I'm not on the committee. I don't have a vote. But I would, I would insist that everybody vote no to this motion. Thank you. Member Deal. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, um, I remember that uh, attending my very first meeting, even before very first meeting, the government's message to Albertans of uh, fiscal reckoning, and then right after that kind of uh, narrative um, convening of our very first meeting of the member um, service uh, committee under um, that chaired by you, um, then the government asked us to take a roll back, and uh, we said it then. We don't have a problem to um, you know, participate in by uh, doing our role, but this should not be used as a precedent to attack uh, ordinary citizens, Alberta workers, and that is exactly what the UCP government done after actually using that move as a symbolic uh, to Albertans. So UCP government bent to uh, uh, roll back youth wages, and they rolled back uh, Occupational Health and Safety Acts. They rolled back uh, made changes to how Alberta workers uh, would have been affected to their overtime hours. And not only this, uh, they went after doctors. Uh, there was no funding for education system that was promised before uh, by the GCP uh, party during the campaign. Not only that, even middle of the pandemic, uh, it was so rich by the GCP minister actually uh, let go about 25,000 education um, staff. And the government uh, consistently uh, kept giving the warning to 11,000 healthcare workers as well. So one side, this is the message, and that is the pattern. The GCP government has been creating the narrative to, uh, uh, for, for the Albertans to do more for less. Uh, during that time, uh, they attacked very those vulnerable people, the people on age, uh, they are big sections of the society. So you can go on and on. The list is pretty long. But now, in, in, in the middle of uh, this pandemic, when Alberta is unprecedentedly uh, affected by the COVID virus, and Albertans are doing, um, you know, uh, whatever they can do to uh, help and follow the gov government and the Alberta health orders um, to contain the virus, to get back to the normal life. In, in the middle of this, I don't know, but this, this made a sense that uh, the, the GCP caucus or, or the GCP government came up with the idea when they're asking each and every Albertans to do, to do more with the less and accept less wages and denied the democratic rights of the workers or the sections of our province to sit with them and negotiate their terms. And all of a sudden they're asking uh, this one specific question to give unprecedented raise to their caucus mem member. I think this is totally unacceptable and we need to oppose uh, this move and I will encourage uh, all actually committee members, uh, they can vote in this committee to vote against this move. And this is not only my view, I think this is our duty. And this is our moral duty, not to move on this path in the midst of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. 
Member Goring, please. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I'm just so disgusted that this is what we're talking about right now. While we know that there are so many Albertans that are struggling and can't afford their mortgage, they're losing their businesses. Um, we should be talking about ways that we can continue to support Albertans get through this pandemic. There's financial instability that's happening all across the province. Um, this week is Alberta's small business week and Instead of talking about, you know, perhaps introducing a rent or eviction um, protection for commercial businesses, um, we're talking about giving a raise to a UCP member. Um, it, it blows my mind that this is where we're at. It is so out of touch. It is so tone deaf. Um, I know Albertans are reaching out to, to government to express these concerns. Um, I also know that they're not getting a response. Uh, they're not being listened to. If if this government was listening to Albertans, they would not be putting forward a raise to one of their members, knowing the devastating impacts that COVID has had on so many across this province. Um, it is entitled, and I'm just absolutely embarrassed that this is something that we're talking about this morning, and I would encourage all members to vote no uh, to giving the UCP member a raise. Absolutely unacceptable. Member Barnes, followed by Member Sabir. <clears throat> thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I, I too feel that this is is so tone deaf that it is a, a moral issue. Um, and, and let's keep in mind, uh, colleagues that all 87 of us will be painted with the same brush for, for increasing, increasing a deputy's pay substantially at, at, at as so many members in front of me spoke so, so clearly at a time that public service are, are, are taxed to, to the, you know, to the end, the fact that private employees uh, have had to take on so much debt, have had to pay so many, many high, you know, increases in utilities and insurance and, 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 and so many of them have lost their jobs. At a time, we're all so concerned about the health and the welfare of our families, our neighbours and our communities. All 87 of us are going to be painted with, with how tone deaf, again, this, this government is. The same government that ran a $17 billion deficit last year. The same government that, that uh, brags about uh, this big majority they got. And oh no, heaven forbid, the government before us was going to put us $100 billion in debt. Well, my goodness, uh, the UCP has blown, blown way past that. And, and so, so your timing, your, your, your understanding of where the average Al Albertan family and community at, uh, especially in rural Alberta, is it, so off. And a deputy house leader, um, maybe it's fair to suggest that, that the house leader if the house leader can't accommodate things, should should uh, should maybe share some of, some of his pay or her pay. Uh, secondly, we all know in the legislature how how many of us are willing to stand up and help when when called upon. Uh, you know, this this situation has been for the last 20 months has been taxing on all of us, and uh, so so there's all kinds of help that uh, we'd gladly stand up and help and volunteer for at a time that that 4.4 million Albertans are, are, are feeling the, the stress. So Mr. Mr. Speaker, thank you for letting me speak to all the voting co colleagues on this uh, committee. I would ask that you vote against this. Thank you. Member Sabir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I will be speaking against this and also like everybody else, I'm also very surprised to see this motion uh, at this time when Albertan want their government to be singularly focused on managing this pandemic. And what we see here is that UCP government is trying to manage its own caucus. Out of 24 or five ministers, they couldn't find anybody to be deputy and take on these responsibilities within what they are already getting paid. And now they're creating uh, a huge increase, $12,000 increase, 10% increase for one of their member. 
when this government was caught vacationing overseas in December, when they were caught uh, dining on Sky Palace. I think at that time, they promised that they will be somewhat humble, they will learn some lesson, and they will be focused on Albertans, not themselves, but time and again, uh, what we will see from this government, that they are singularly focused on themselves and managing their own caucus by giving them raises, by making new possessions, accommodating them. And I don't think that what Albertan expect and deserve. We should all be voting against this. It's completely uh, unnecessary. It's not needed. It's waste of public funds. Public funds should not be used like this at a time when we are asking public service to tighten their belts. When we are asking people on disabilities to take $30 cut because government cannot pay that. We are firing teachers. We are firing like people from public service. They are reducing public service by 7%. And here what we see is a raise for one of their own. I think this need to stop. This hypocrisy needs to stop. Brothers. If there are none, I am prepared. Oh, Member Dang. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And, and I, I think, um, well, it's an interesting day when I'm agreeing with uh, with my independent colleagues here, but uh, Mr. Speaker, disgusting is, is perhaps uh, one of the best words I've heard yet today about, about how to describe this. Uh, we know that Albertans right now, if, if they get sick, whether that's uh, with COVID-19 or any other illness, um, they don't have job protected paid sick leave um, right now uh, because this government refused to bring that in. Um, small business owners who right now may not be able to pay the rent do not have commercial eviction bans. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we've seen this government time and time again do nothing during this pandemic. But today, they have 12 thousand dollars a 10 percent raise double digit uh, percentage wise raise mr speaker to give to a ucp insider to the ucp mla to their friends mr speaker but yet we have albertans struggling every single day and and and, and it simply doesn't make any sense how many people I, I know mr speaker that nobody in my constituency emailed me or, or called me or or talked to me on the door and said you know what uh UCP MLAs need a raise right now. That's not the number one issue I'm getting in my inbox, Mr. Speaker. I, 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 hope, uh, I, I hope perhaps if UCP MLAs are hearing about this, perhaps in Peace River or Lethbridge or, or, or anywhere else, Mr. Speaker, um, that they could inform this committee, they could inform the place um, that they are receiving correspondence um, that UCP MLAs deserve a raise and UCP MLAs are doing so great they should be packing, patting themselves on the back. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I've got to tell you, I, I'm receiving many... Many, many correspondence to the opposite of that, um, where people don't believe this government is fit to govern, um, is fit to be in this place at all. But instead, Mr. Speaker, what we see is, is, is an out of touch motion, uh, um, uh, an absurd motion that, that Mr. Speaker, if, if it wasn't in black and white in front of us, I wouldn't even believe that it had been proposed at all, uh, that we should be bringing forward a raise for government UCP members, for people who, who, who right now, Mr. Speaker, um, don't even have a grip on the reality of what is happening outside the, uh, these, these walls, Mr. Speaker. Um, they don't have a grip on the reality of what is affecting um, everyday Albertans who, who are focused on, on trying to make ends meet, um, but yet giving themselves 10%, $12,000 raises, giving their friends $12,000 raises. Mr. Speaker, that's hypocrisy at its finest. Uh, and, and, and Mr. Speaker, it, it, it simply um, doesn't make any sense because, again, um, when every single person who's spoken to this other than the mover... Uh, my, uh, and, and Mr. Speaker, somebody will correct me if I'm wrong, of course, but, but nobody in this, uh, in this committee, um, other than the mover of the motion, has spoken to it. Everybody has spoken against it. I think it could not be more clear. Um, and, and, and it could not be more clear when there is unanimity between independent members and the NDP opposition. That, that doesn't happen that often, Mr. Speaker. Uh, but today, today, we see um, standing together against this recklessness, this irresponsibility, this hypocrisy, this, uh, this absurdism that is coming forward from UCP members who believe that they should live 
by a different set of rules, who believe that they deserve more, that they deserve better than everybody else. And that is personified and exemplified in this $12,000 raise for a UCP MLA, that they are not giving to a single healthcare worker, that they are not giving to a single small business, that they are not giving to, a, to, to anybody who's struggling with food insecurity right now, Mr. Speaker, who's struggling with any of the problems that, that this government has failed to act on throughout the COVID pandemic, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and, and instead, we're here talking about, should we give MLAs, should we give UCP MLAs more money because they're doing a good job? And, and Mr. Speaker, I think that's absolutely ridiculous. I think it's something that every single member should vote against. And indeed, Mr. Speaker, if, if so many UCP MLAs are going to remain silent on this, then, then we'll have to see how they vote because this doesn't make any sense and I'm sure they will receive correspondence about this. Thank you. I see a hand up. Um... No. Are there others? Oh, sorry. Member Sabir? Yeah, I think Mr. Speaker, I did raise hand. We have talked about it. I was uh, just wondering, like any member from the UCP caucus, uh, if they would want to share with us if their constituents in West Yellowhead, Highwood, uh, Lethbridge East, Peace River, they have uh, talked uh, to by their constituents about this race. Have they uh, asked any of their constituents and what their constituents will think about this race. Are there others? Seeing and hearing none, I am prepared to call the question. Um, Member Dang has asked for a recorded vote. I will do that uh, through the room and then call individually to uh, each member on the phone. All those, uh, correction, please indicate uh, in favor of the motion or against the motion? Member Williams. In favor. Member Ellis. Uh, in favor. Member Sigurdsson. In favor. Member Long. In favor. Member Diol. Against. Member Goring. Against. Member Sabir. Against. Member Newdorf. Favor. Member Dang. Against. It's carried five. That motion is carried five votes to four. We are at other business. Is there any other business that has not been yet raised? Seeing none. The date of the next meeting will be at the call of the chair, and that will likely be for the purposes of the budget parameters guide uh, or budget parameters meeting. Um, motion to adjourn. Member Newdorf. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed, please say no. Motion is carried, and so ordered. The meeting is adjourned. <laughs>